What's going on guys, welcome to the video. Jacob Rees-Mogg appeared on LBC with Nick Ferrari this morning for his regular show, Ring Rees-Mogg. We are going to take a look at a small clip from the show where Jacob Rees-Mogg absolutely destroys the new Ramona Alliance that plans to work together in 60 seats, including Rees-Mogg's seat at the coming election next month. Of course, referring to the Lib Dem leader Joe Swinson, Change UK's Anna Sozelberry, and the incompetent Green Party's decision to help each other lose the next election by forming a sort of pact or alliance. Now let's not forget these lot are essentially the dregs of our political system with less chance of winning the next election than the monster raving loony party. Jacob Rees-Mogg's absolute destruction of the Ramona alliance comes in response to a liberal Remain voter who questions whether the Tories can get a majority because he fears the Corbynated chicken becoming Prime Minister more than this Liberal fears Brexit. To me, that is proof that the Lib Dems fear campaign to scare the Liberals of this country into voting for them has failed miserably, since their own supporters fear Corbyn more than Brexit. But anyway, enough of me talking, let's see what Rees Mogg had to say about this new Remainer alliance led by Joe Swinson. Good morning. Um, the question I have is, with the current split in the country over Brexit, how certain are you that the Conservative Party can win the next general election with a clear majority as opposed to a hung parliament? Um, Dan, that is a very important question. Um, I suppose my return would be, could it be more divided than the current House of Commons and less able to come to a decision? I hope that's unlikely. And we've got to put our message, and Boris Johnson is a brilliant campaigner, there is a very clear choice for people, isn't there? Do you want your Prime Minister to be Boris Johnson, to deliver on the deal he's got and to get back to domestic issues? Or do you want your Prime Minister to be Jeremy Corbyn, to have two referendums next year, a, a negotiation which, once it's taken place, the Labour Party, having achieved a triumphal renegotiation of Boris Johnson's deal, will campaign against it in the referendum, followed by a Scottish referendum on independence, so willing to give up the whole country for the sake of getting a few extra votes from the SNP, or the stability Boris offers. So I, I think I think the country will back Boris, and therefore we won't be in the hung Parliament territory. Just before I bring Dan back in, this is, of course, Boris Johnson, who vowed he would never send a letter to the European Union, and he would die in a ditch. I'm delighted to say, as far as I know, his health is in perfect order, and he's functioning as of today, unless you know differently. Um, and so why should we believe what he says? He had every intention. He was stopped from doing it by Parliament. The Benn Act was a disgrace. It was um, uh, giving in our negotiating position to the European Union. And it got through uh, because of a Remainer House. And it got it? through because of a Remainer House and because standing orders weren't applied in any normal way. might be strong to say improperly, but they were applied in a way that had not previously been known. So the whole process was dubious. The House of Lords' contribution to this was extraordinary because it's the revising House and it gave up on all its standing orders to treat um, a highly contentious bill as emergency legislation. So Mr Burke got this, Speaker Burke got this wrong, Jacob Rees-Mogg. Former Speaker Burke. Former Speaker Burke got this wrong. In my view, yes. Now, I'm not going to bother going over in any detail what Rees-Mogg said about a Tory majority, since he is a Conservative MP in an election campaign. He is obviously going to support his party and Boris Johnson, so nothing he said is any more or less than I would expect with an election next month. And we all know what the Labour Party want with Diver, Delay and campaigning against their own Brexit deal in a second referendum, along with allowing the SNP another independence referendum. What really matters in this part of the interview is Nick Ferrari asking JRM how Boris can be trusted given the fact we now have a Brexit extension when Boris obviously said we would leave by October the 31st or he'd be dead in a ditch. Now, I've said it many times before, and a lot of you already know this, Boris Johnson had absolutely zero choice in sending the extension letter. The Benn Act and Parliament forced the extension on Boris Johnson and the country, which was then reinforced by the Letwin Amendment after the Turkeys in Parliament avoided an election twice. As nice as it would be to take the easy route and blame Boris for this shit show, and yet another three month delay, it is a completely disingenuous thing to do, because the moment the Tory Remainer rebels went against him, the Labour Party and said Tory rebels controlled the country, not Boris. People will say he could have used the Civil Contingencies Act or some other executive power to force through no deal on October the 31st. But I would have to remind them that the Supreme Court overruled the prorogation 
which before that case was something the government of the day always had in its armoury. After that decision, the Remainer Parliament and the Supreme Court had been running the country until the election was agreed to last week. As it stands, we are in the aftermath of that situation. Now, let's move on to the next clip and the moment Jacob Rees-Mogg calls this Ramona Alliance out for what they are, which is ironic since they are working against Jacob Rees-Mogg, as I reported yesterday, to remove him from his seat. Quick response from you, Dan. Um, yeah, I mean, I can understand where you're, where you're coming from. My main concern is I'm a unionist, I'm a Remainer, um, I'm a Liberal, um, and I, but I don't want to see uh, Labour in government. I think it'll be very damaging, uh, potentially with the uh, Scottish referendum on the cards. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't imagine another one of those. Uh, Boris, some of, his, some of the Conservative policies are great, um, but I'm torn. I'm torn at the moment. I've yet to be. I've yet. To what be will it take? Concerned. Lastly, Dan, what, what what will win your vote, or indeed, what might lose your vote? I think potentially I'm going to have to vote strategically uh, with regards to. I do not want to see a Labour government right. uh, under this uh, current okay. leadership. Let me uh, thank well, you, to, Dan, Dan, Dan. Dan, just to say Jacob, thank Bruce thank you for that, and I, I see that you're torn in many different ways on very strong principles but in the end to avoid a Labour government we need a Conservative government there isn't another choice we've seen with the uh, Remain coalition that the Lib Dems have already given up they've already accepted that they cannot win and therefore voting for them is effectively a wasted vote or a vote by default for Jeremy Corbyn well, not if they bring a, a sort of Remain alliance together no, no, it's, 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 unfortunately it's a loser's Remain alliance isn't it it's of people who don't win many seats between them all I think they've got uh, 24 seats. So it's not a it's not a serious Remain alliance. It's an alliance of the people who lose elections. But if it and was on a Remain ticket, if you'll allow that possibly more than 20, that, that a fair percentage of people out in this mm, country... Without including the Labour Party, it's a non-starter. And the Labour Party aren't even in the discussions. All right, let's move to other matters. Dan, thank you. Sir so even the caller, who I will remind you is a Remainer, understands that Boris Johnson had no choice but to extend the Brexit deadline and, of course, the rest of the current situation we find ourselves in. Like I said, Parliament forced that and has cost us £3 billion in the process. The guy spells out that he is a Remainer and a Liberal, but does not want a Corbyn government, which I can relate to. I guess that is the common ground Remainers and Brexiteers have. Everybody hates Jeremy Corbyn, leaving this guy torn between what to do, which prompts Nick to ask him what would it take to either win or lose this Remainer's vote. To which the caller responds with what sounds like a heavy heart, saying he will vote strategically to keep the Labour Party out of office. Jacob Rees-Mogg also picks up on that and thoroughly shits on the Lib Dems' new Remainer alliance because, like he said, they have finally admitted the obvious fact that the Lib Dems are never going to win a majority. Regardless of what Joe Swinson run around claiming all last week, it seems she's actually come out of her fantasy politics that Andrew Neil called her out for. He rightly calls it the Losers Alliance, and what a burn that really is. Not because it's especially rude or spicy, but because it's 100% factually correct. We are talking about a collection of parties that constantly lose elections, and in the case of Anna Sozelberry, is not going to get elected anyway. Jacob Rees-Mogg is spot on in his assessment of these shit weasels that are actively trying to unseat him, to the point that the Lib Dems have been spreading misleading campaign material around that makes out they are contenders in Jacob Rees-Mogg's South East Somerset seat, where they actually got 8% of the vote in 2017, compared to Labour's 34.7% and Jacob Rees-Mogg's 53%. At the end of the day, the Lib Dems are desperate, and given what this Remain caller is saying, their target supporters know they are no better than a wet fart right now, and are ready to vote for the Conservatives by the sounds of it. Jacob handled that Remain voter very well, in my opinion, and might well have converted him to the Tory party. For this election, at least, as you heard him say, he actually liked Boris Johnson's policies. It seems that Boris and the Tory election strategy is working to some degree when it comes to swinging Remain voters over to the Tory party. 
Jacob thoroughly destroyed the Lib Dems, Ramona Alliance and chances at this next election, along with every single party who is trying to conspire against him. Calling them the Losers Alliance is both ruthless and true, which makes it even better. They say the truth hurts the most, and let's not forget, it's not long until the British voters get to teach these Ramonian traitors some real truth. They lost the 2016 referendum, they lost the 2017 general election, they have lost once already in the 2019 EU elections, and now they will lose in the 2019 general elections. Support in Remain is by definition losing at the end of the day. And on that note, I'm going to end the video there, guys. I want to thank the channel's PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe style members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like. Subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next one. This parliament is a dead parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it away. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr. Speaker, when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas.